Evening, everybody. Hello. How are we all? Are we all okay? We're going to start evening prayer in a moment. So just welcome to everybody that's going to come on. And just pray that you've all had um, a blessed day. You actually managed to get dressed today. That's the question. I know there are two people in my household who shall remain nameless that have not managed to get dressed in the last few days. Apparently, I heard there was a gentleman who had unfortunately um, run out of toilet roll and has had to resort to using newspaper. Apparently, the times are rough. Yeah. Please forgive me, I am being confined in my house with two teenagers. Hello, everybody. Hi, Denise. Hi, Joe. I hope you're all well and, and doing um, well under the circumstances. Have you all got your Bibles ready and have downloaded the liturgy to have a look at so you can follow along? I hope so. I have put the link in an earlier post about um, the prayer where you can find everything. So the scripture readings tonight will be Psalm 16 and it will also be the Gospel of John chapter 11 we'll be looking at. And we're just um, praying the daily office, which is one of the offices each day that we pray. Here's one of the blessings of the situation that's going on now is that we have a bit of extra time don't we how how often do we all complain that we don't have any time and it's like god's doing a reset and we're all stopping looking at the human trinity of me myself and i and we're focusing on the holy trinity of father son holy spirit and so we have that bit of extra time. Hi, Paula. Hi, Alison. I hope you're both well today. And it's all, it's all about the power of perspective, isn't it? How we choose to respond to situations. And I hope that you're responding with gratitude today and looking at the things that you are grateful for um, and thankful. And we have been given this day another day by the lord haven't we and we can turn to him now and we can turn to him in prayer so if you've got your liturgy ready and finding that comfort that the whole of the church are praying these very same words as we get into a rhythm of prayer this familiarity in the words that we repeat over different seasons and the knowledge that people all around the world are saying these words as well. It does bring comfort. So shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we complain that we might not get a lot of time, that life can be really stressful. But help us to see today as a gift we've been given and help us to determine that we're going to be purposeful in everything we say, everything we do. We're gonna to look to you and try to help others because we know we are covered by your promises. We're covered by the blood of Christ. Help us to be thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. Did any of you um, give a round of applause for the NHS? at the doors last night. It was so lovely to hear everybody just recognize um, people who are working for the good of others and to just say thank you despite the constraints. And we're gonna turn our hearts now to God and say thank you to him for another day. So we're gonna start with our opening prayer. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind.
as our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. We have a psalm tonight, two Bible readings today. We're getting adventurous, aren't we? Psalm 16. The Lord is at my right hand. I shall not fall. Preserve me, O God, for in you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. All my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are legion that may run after, their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup. In your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel and in the night watches, he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. My flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death, nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The Lord is at my right hand. I shall not fall. Give to us, Lord Christ, the fullness of grace, your presence and your very self. For you are our portion and our delight now and forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. They were to comfort those. I mean, not that any of us would have a, would have a wobble. No, we wouldn't, would we? But should we? Those are words we can cling to, aren't they? That God is for us and that in his presence there is fullness of joy. You know, when we set the Lord always before us, he's at our right hand and we shall not fall. And I think that's a promise that certainly lifts me up this evening. I hope it does you. We go to our refrain. We say together, Christ committed no sin. No guile was found on his lips. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin. No guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he trusted himself to God who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. Now, have you got your Bibles ready? I hope you've all got your your word, your sword in your hands. If not, it is on the liturgy that um, we've linked in. Um, and our scripture reading, our gospel reading is from the book of John. I'm starting at chapter 11 and it's one of my favourites working through this. There is a video link as well um, 
in the earlier comment from today that you can watch. So John chapter 11, verses 1 to 16. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Beth Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped her feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you. And are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciple said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death. But they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, when we look at Mary and Martha in this story, they called on Jesus, who said that Lazarus' death, he would not die. This illness will not lead to death. And the two sisters, one was frustrated and kind of ends up saying to Jesus, if only you'd been here, if you'd only done something. And the other ends up distraught at Lazarus's death. And I think when we look at this, we've all, maybe if we're really honest, been a bit disappointed in the Lord. He might not have done what we wanted or done it when we wanted. Or maybe he's denied what we wanted. You know, these are things that we wrestle with in our times of struggle. But as we read on in the story, and I hope you do, we see God glorified through this. Because when Jesus asks, is ask the people there to roll away the stone, to participate in his miracle. He looks up to God and he says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And this is him saying, you know what? I've already prayed about this before. I've already taken my problems to God and he has heard me. And when we look at scriptures like Hebrews 7.25 that tells us Jesus is our intercessor or Romans 8.27 that tells us the Holy Spirit is our intercessor, it's moments like that that we're reminded how important prayer are, prayer is, and that we need to have our victory in the spiritual before we can have it in the physical. 
So rather than us getting despondent and thinking Jesus has let us down, or he wasn't quick enough, or he didn't do what we wanted, we have to give everything to him in prayer. And we have to determine that God's will will happen. You know, he is a faithful God. And he took a situation there that our eyes would look at and say that was impossible. Lazarus was dead. But the Lord said this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it's for God's glory. And God does still do miracles today. And what he does, he does so others can believe. So let us commit ourselves in prayer during this time and just turn to God and start expecting him to do amazing things. So we continue with our liturgy. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Take me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. And the Magnificat, we say together, Come, let us return to the Lord, for our God who will richly pardon. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Come, let us return to the Lord, to our God, who will richly pardon. And so we come to a time of prayer. Again, if you would like anything you would like the community to pray for, you can put it in the comments and we will commit to praying for it. Or you can message us privately if you want to. But know that people are praying for you every single day in this parish and around the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings it has brought. Shift our eyes to look at the good in our life. We've had another day and you've never forsaken us or left us. We thank you for family and friends and we pray your protection to surround them. We thank you for the sunshine and the glorious weather that you have sent. Lord, we thank you that we have more than most. We have a roof over our heads, a bed to sleep in, food on our table. Lord, help us to be purposeful in our lives, in all our actions, and to help those that don't. For those that are struggling financially tonight, Lord, or those who are struggling emotionally, spiritually, mentally or with any situation in life we ask for your intervention we ask for your you lord to help in those situations and the right people to help them reach out to those that can help lord we pray for all those who are giving of themselves selflessly for others 
We pray your protection around them. Give them strength and your peace, Lord, to know that they are doing your will. We pray for this world as it renews itself. Help us to be kinder to both the world and to one another. And we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, for your love and your blessing upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing, nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And our collect for today. Merciful Lord, absolve your people from their offences, that through your bountiful goodness we may all be delivered from the chains of those sins which by our frailty we have committed. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our blessed Lord and Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, on God now and forever. Amen. And we just say together the Lord's Prayer. Trusting in the compassion of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God our Redeemer show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining us for prayer. Now, I pray that it brings you some comfort and rest and peace tonight as you Go about your evening and you go to bed. We've given everything to God and just I hope you sleep well in peace and know that we are all praying together. And um, although there'll be no prayers, Dave will be here tomorrow. Dave will be here at 10.30 on Sunday morning and he will be taking Holy Communion on our behalf because at the moment we can't go to church, can we? So um, it's, it's a comfort to me that Dave is taking that for us um so yes they, they will be um 10 30 on sunday and then next week 9 9 a.m and 6 p.m for morning and evening prayers have a blessed day evening <laughs>